That's us. One, two, six. Woman found dead in the Dollar Hotel. See the night plague. Calling car 126. Car 126. This way, please. Uh, Lieutenant, you'll handle this quietly. We have a reputation. I wouldn't brag about it. Keep these people out of here. Take her down. Spitzy! Spitzy! What's wrong, Steve? Why'd you say you saw Arlene last? I saw her going into the Dollar Hotel. Was she living there? I don't know. Why? Take a look at that. Hey, you think it's her? I don't know, but it could be. Do you think Arlene would kill herself? She left me for Frankie French. If she's the gal in the morgue, Frankie French killed her and framed this Alice Ross stuff. But it won't be so good if Frankie spills the weight around that Steve Collins ain't a big enough man to bury his own wife. We're going down to the morgue. Find out who she is. And supposing it's her. We'll take her out of there. Here, get a load of that. So what? Why, don't you know a blonde that might fit that description? Arlene? And in the morgue. Good enough for her. She walked out on you. She didn't walk out on me, understand? Girls, don't walk out on Frankie French. Four bucks in a purse, and I give her three grand a week ago. And how did she finish up in that room? Oh, Collins might have killed her and planted the body there to look like suicide. I get it. And he'll claim the body and make a big show about the funeral. Yeah, maybe that's what he thinks. Oh, it might have been anybody. We'll get down there and get a look at her. And if it's our lean, we'll take her out. Come on. Hello? Never mind, let it go. I found him. Oh, Bill. Huh? I've asked you not to use this for a bedroom. Do you know it's five o'clock? Morning or evening? Get up and pay attention. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm sending you over to the morgue. Think you'll take me? Twenty-three, blonde and beautiful. I want you to identify that girl. No use, Chief. I won't be able to identify her. Why not? Very simple. If I'd ever seen her, she'd have seen me. Then she wouldn't have committed suicide. Now listen, Crane. All right, all right. Who do you want it to be? We've got a client, Mrs. Cortland, who thinks this girl may be her daughter, Catherine. Why doesn't she go over and take a peek at her? Well, the Cortlands are money, society and all that. In case this girl isn't her daughter, Mrs. Cortland doesn't want to be seen looking in a morgue for her. All right. And Bill, remember, if you go to sleep over there, they'll bury you. <laughs> Hello. Who? Oh, you want Mr. Stiff. Which one? Sure, we got a lot of them, but they can't come to the phone. I said so. No, I ain't their father. This is the county morgue. I get 20 calls like that a night. Fellas kid some girl, then give them this number to call. Hello, Bill. Hello, Greening. What are you doing around here? Have you got a girl here named Alice Ross? Relative? Well, not exactly. That's Bill Crane, the private detective. I'm Johnson in the store, Mr. Crane. You think you can identify her? Not till I've seen her. Well, come on, fella. Hey, wait a minute. I gotta go in with you. Why the interest in this case, Bill? Just working. Yeah. Who for? The Census Bureau. So you won't talk, huh? I don't know who she is. Hey, you. There's a fella out there wants to see you, Birds. Me? No, the reporters. Have there been many people in to see this, Alice Ross? No, just a few of the regulars. 
Regulars? Yeah, they're folks that have had somebody in the family disappear. They keep coming down and looking every time we have an unidentified body. Like this fella out there in the office. What fella? I don't know. He don't look like the type to take them out. He looks like the type that sends them in. And he wants to see Alice Ross? Yeah. Excuse me. Where's the fellow that wanted to see Alice Ross? He went out to bring somebody in and wants to see the body secretly. Swell, I'll be glad to see both of them. Where's the fellow you went after? He wants me to take a look at it. And he's willing to give the papers a hot story if that Ross dame is who he thinks she is. And if she isn't? Well, then he don't want any publicity. He don't want the babies worried about to know that he's worried, see? I see. Be sure that you do. Hello, Spitzy. Funny, where do you suppose he went? What's the difference? Where's the girl? In here. I don't like jokes. She's gone. Why, it's Al. He's dead. Where's the girl? Look in the receiving room. Nobody in here. Somebody must have swiped her. Boy, what a story. Come on. This way, Lieutenant. Who found them? There were four of us. Johnson, Bill Crane, and... Crane? Is he here? Right behind you, Lieutenant. What are you doing here? I came to see the Ross girl. Who else was with you? Another man who wanted to see her. Any of you know him? No. Who's in charge here? Good evening, Inspector Layman. Who is it, Strom? The morgue attendant. It looks like he caught someone trying to steal a girl's body, so they killed him. He's only partly right. I don't think they meant to kill him. What? Well, he was struck only once, and that blow would have only stunned the average man. Is that right, Doctor? That's right. A previous fact... Who is taken... this? William Crane, a private detective. There were two of them. One of them held Al's wrist while the other tried to tie him up. But Al put up such a fight, they had to hit him. How do you know all this? Mr. Strom just told you that I'm a detective. Who are you working for? Colonel Black. I mean, who's your client? That would be unethical for me to say. A client's identity is confidential. What was Colonel Black's instructions when he sent you here? Perhaps he was sent here to remove the body, so it couldn't be identified. Say, uh, he was down here alone with Al. Oh, he was, huh? Sure, I killed the attendant and carried the girl out in my pocket. Want to see? You could have had an accomplice. Sure, nothing ventured, nothing accomplished, I always say. What do you always say? I don't want to interfere in your case, Strom, but if I were you, I'd have this man placed in custody. Well, I... <laughs> Why don't you lock me up, Mr. Lehman? Then Mr. Strom wouldn't have to take the rap. Lieutenant, this fellow wants to see the body. What for? He thinks he can identify it. That isn't necessary. We all know who he is. The girl's body, Inspector. Did you know this Alice Ross? No, not by that name. But from her description, she could be my cousin. What was her name? Edna Brown. Is your name Brown, too? Yes, A.N. Brown. You ever see this man before? Don't admit a thing. I'm a murder suspect, and Mr. Lehman is looking for my accomplice. Aren't you? Lock this man up or put him out. Get out of train. Get out of here and be at that inquest at 10 in the morning. Good night, Chief. Don't waste your time watching me. I'll be there.
tricky place, ain't it? Yeah, just once more is all I need. Want a cab? Is that it? Yeah. You, uh, been here long? Oh, about four years. I, I didn't think I'd do so good at no, first. No, no, no. I, I mean tonight. Oh, now, wait a minute. You're not going to ask me if I saw any strange cars around here, are you? All right. Did somebody else ask you that? Uh, only about 12 cops. What did you tell them? Well, I did see one. Big sedan with two fellas in it parked right over there. You sure it wasn't a hearse? Say, don't I look like a guy that knows a hearse when I see one? You ought to. Where to? You think it'll make it to the Darlow Hotel? Just get in and hold your hat. Then we got a radio in this car. Would you like to hear it? Huh? I say the radio. Would you like to hear it? No, I want to think. Drive the cab. That's it. He was left handed. Did the heat bother you much today? Terrible. That's cooler now. You know, I always say. It's not the it's... heat, it's the humidity. Yeah, that's it. It's not the heat, it's the. Hey, what are you trying to do? I don't know nothing about him. He's just a fair. Shut up. What'd you tell the cops? Nothing. You tell them about me? Yeah, but none of us knew who you were. You know me now? Certainly. No, you don't. You don't know me. Maybe you're right. You know I'm right. On your way, Lucky. Is that car anything like the one you saw in back of the morgue? After what he just said, you expect me to go on recognizing things? Even if you weren't scared, I doubt if you could remember anything. Yeah, well, after what just happened, I could even forget you. There's a little matter at 3.30. Wait for me. I haven't got any insurance on that crate. Make it two bucks. It's a deal. If my act's good enough for the gaiety, I tell you. Good evening. Yeah. Right. With or without? With. Galesburg, say I got friends there. I'll bet you have. No bags. What's the rate? Eight eleven. Three dollars. I wonder if you know the butlers in Galesburg. I wonder. Say, do you know Lou Herschel down there? Why, yes, do you? Never heard of him. How'd you like to earn that? You ought to follow his course. Well, it's an idea, but just give me a look in 418. That's the room where that lady hang herself. Uh-huh. No, sir, I can't do that. Come on. Nothing's been tapped. That's where she was found hanging with no clothes on. Cops said they wet heel marks where she beat against the door. Wet heel marks? She taken a bath first before she did it. Water still in the tub. She used one of them. Did the lady have any callers? One. Stand up there a minute. 
What do you look like? A musician. What does a musician look like? He is carrying some kind of case for a horn. Or maybe a Tommy gun. Say, it could have been that. 132. That's about 12 pounds more than she'd have weighed, I guess. Let's see. Say, what are you doing? That hook ought to hold a person your weight if it didn't kick around too much. Huh? That's what I thought. Did the cops take her clothes? No, sir. They didn't take nothing. Did she ever get her clothes clean? I don't know, mister. She's a pretty classy dresser. Well, not in these. They don't look like they've ever been worn. I gotta get back to my job. Stick around. This is getting interesting. They're all brand new. Must have had something on when she brought these in. Where are her shoes? I don't know, mister. Did the cops take them? I don't know. Maybe she was an Indian. Sure went to a lot of trouble to prevent anybody identifying her. Mister. Please, mister. I've got to get back to my job. Oh, all right. Okay, you go ahead. i got a couple of things here that I want to look at, so you go right ahead. Mister, I can't leave you here alone. I see what you mean. Goodbye. What's the matter? I, I believe someone's in there. Oh, get out of the way. Grim! Can you open this door? It's locked from the other side. Who is it? Police, open the door. Just a minute. What would anyone want in that room? Well, would anyone want in any room in this joint? I give you two seconds to open that door, I'll break it in. Sorry to bother you, lady, but there's a sneak thief on the floor. And I thought he might have got in this room. Do you mind if I take a look around? Yes. Yes, I do mind. I've had cops use that excuse to pull around my things before. So if you don't mind, go right back to your station and get a warrant right away. I'm sorry to trouble you, lady, but I'm just doing my duty. Twenty-seven sixty, twenty-seven eighty, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, three thousand. Not bad. Who are you? I represent the Atlas Matrimonial Bureau. We're always on the lookout for attractive widows with large inheritances. Now, with uh, three thousand dollars and um, yes, I think we'll be able to take care of you nicely. You give me that money, or I'll call that police. Uh -huh. Then you'd have to tell them where you got it. Take it easy, lady. Here's your money. I'm no sneak thief, like that nasty man said. Then what are you doing in here? Well, you see, I... Oh, they caught you in that room, and you and I'm came... afraid I'm going to have to stay here until they clear out. Look, suppose we agree that you don't ask any questions, and I'll ask none. Fair enough. Ah, an old friend. 
A little drink would make everything just dandy. You, uh, live here alone? Yes. Not married? Well, I was married. My husband ran out on me. He was a sap. Did you, uh, know this Alice Ross? No, I never saw her. But I heard her sometimes. Doing what? Oh, just moving around, oh. you know. <laughs> Incidentally, I've been sort of frightened since that happened. I won't let anybody hurt you, precious. Well, they've gone now. Oh, that's all right. There's no hurry. Just so I'm out of here by 10 o'clock in the morning. You're sure 10 o'clock's going to be early enough? Better make it 9.30. I'm due there at 10. Morning, Inspector. Morning, Strom. Witnesses all here? Yes, sir. That is, uh, why aren't you inside? It's 10 o'clock. Well, we we're waiting for you, sir. Crane is not here yet, but he'll be popping in. Popping in? The witnesses popped into inquest, Tom? I distinctly advise you to hold Crane last night. He's your responsibility. I'll get him. That's right, not the inspector's bridge workout. Yes, sir. The coroner's ready to start the inquest, sir. Oh, he's ready to start, huh? Did you find Crane? He wasn't there. Well, look someplace else, but find him. Yes, sir. Poor oh, idiot. Good morning, sir. Ten o'clock, please. Where am I? You're in room 420 of the Darla Hotel, sir. When your wife checked out last night, uh, she left a ten o'clock call for you. My wife? Uh-huh. All right. Scores again. Now, Mrs. Horn, please control yourself. We'll make things just as easy as we can. You've all been very kind to me. Mrs. Horn, did your husband ever mention an Alice Ross? He never discussed his business at home. Where have you been? Give you three guesses. Did your husband have any enemies? No, everyone loved Al. I don't think he had an enemy in the world. I'm sorry for having intruded upon your grief. Pardon me. Uh, just a minute. Was your husband right or left-handed? Why, right-handed. That'll be all. Call A.N. Brown. A.N. Brown? Mr. Brown hasn't appeared yet. This is highly irregular. I signed a subpoena. Well, he wasn't a material witness anyway, so there was no occasion to hold him in connection with the death of Mr. Horn. But Mr. Crane is ready to testify. Mr. Crane, will you step forward, please? Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Name? William Crane. Your address? 2258 Webster Street. Mr. Crane, it has been testified that you were alone with Mr. Horn shortly before his death. That's right. How long were you alone with him? Four or five minutes. Then you were the last person to see him alive. No. No? Who was then? The person or persons who killed him. There is a man who killed him! You told me that he killed him! What was the question? That will be all, Mr. Crane. Oh, thank you. I hope I've helped. Call the next witness. Dr. Wallace? All right. But don't leave the building. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Your name? 
Dr. Frank Wallace. Your address? 1532 Milton Street. What'd you do with the body? Guess again. All right. My top price is five grand. What makes that body worth $5,000 to you? Well, I'll tell you. I believe it's the body of Arlene Vincent, and it's worth just that much to me to find out if I'm right. Couldn't be that Collins is in on this, too, could it? Arlene wasn't the girl to kill herself, and she didn't have $4, but $3,000. I think you'll be a little safer doing business with me than with Collins. Don't know a thing. Oh, you cheap dick, I'll give you five seconds. Where's Collins got that body? Strong's the old pal. Hello, Strom. Think it over. I'll be seeing you. You mixed up with Frankie French in this? What was the verdict? The jury left it open, or I'd be pinching you by now. What about... Now, look. Take it easy, and I'll give you all the clues I get. All right. But I'll be sticking close to you. Doc, am I glad to see you. Look, if you're gonna kiss me, let's get out of the lobby. Are you on this? Yeah. I thought the old man wasn't gonna let us work together anymore. He isn't. I'm just taking over while you're in jail. It's a perfect crime. I'll never serve a day. Hey, yeah? Have you seen this? If the papers keep that up, your friend Strong's gonna have to pinch somebody. Not me. I made a deal with him. I give him clues and he uh, lets me alone. Simple? Yeah. You're simple to trust that, my girl. Trust me. <laughs> How do you like that? Don't lose your faith in policemen, Bill. Maybe they just turned up the rug to dance. Yeah. Well, for that, I won't tell that smart guy Strong where the body is. Don't you wish you knew where it was? I do know. It's in an undertaking parlor. Yeah, which one? That, my boy, is what you're going to find out. <laughs> Suppose I just put an ad in a paper or something. No, you go to all the supply houses until you find one who knows a red-headed, left-handed undertaker. Are you on a level? Certainly. You read the papers. The red hairs were in Al's left hand. Don't you get it? <laughs> You're probably putting that left-handed business in just to complicate it. Look. Now, you try to get away. What are we doing, holding hands or something? Come on, try to get away. I'll slug you. You see, you got your right hand free. Now, if I were left-handed... Yeah? What's that got to do with an undertaker? Oh, Doc, look, if you were looking for an accomplice to rob a morgue, you'd pick a fellow who knew his way around a morgue, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, who would you get? An undertaker. Hmm, the missing witness. Oh, hello, Mr. Cortland. Uh, this is Mr. Crane. Cortland? Yes, I use the name Brown to avoid publicity, Mr. Crane. Oh. Yeah, yeah this is our sponsor, our, I mean, client. You boys are a little hard on the furniture when you reconstruct a crime, aren't you? Well, it's uh, not ours. It's rented. Uh, fix a place for Mr. Cortland to sit down, Doc. Well, oh, don't bother about me. Have you found out anything about my sister? Alice Ross, I mean. What makes you think uh, Miss Ross is your sister, Mr. Cortland? Well, I don't. Mother does. She got this. Who's Chance? Me. My name's Chauncey. Silly, isn't it? <laughs> I was just going to say that. Quiet. The police are now, Mr. Corlin. Thank you. Did, uh, did your uh, mother and sister ever quarrel about money or anything? Oh, yes. They quarreled most of the time, but not about money. Kit had $1,500 a month of her own. But she hasn't touched it since she drew $6,000 three months ago when she left home. Have you seen her since? Once, about two months ago. I happened to bump into her in a place called The Roost. 
They had a hot band there, and Catherine was a little swing crazy. And the last bird that called on Alice Ross was a musician. Did, um, you said your mother uh, believes this Alice Ross girl is your sister Catherine, but you don't. Why? Well, I saw Alice Ross's clothes last night. Catherine never wore stuff like that. I see. I don't want to discourage you, Mr. Cortland, but I wouldn't rely too much on those clothes. Uh, I, uh, I don't think they've ever been worn. Hey, Bill. Don't reach for anything. What are you doing here, Collins? Come on, Crane. You and I are going someplace where we can talk private. What'll I do with them? Put them in the bathroom. Get in there. Stop! I ought to ram this down your throat. You boys get mad awful easy. It's not me, it's Doc. He doesn't like Spitzy. Wait outside. Oh, uh, Spitzy. If I'm not out in 10 minutes, better call the cops. Uh, get him. What do you want, Collins? They're okay. I want to find that girl in the morgue. What makes you think I know where she is? I read the papers. Do you think I took her? I ain't saying who took her. You just let me have her and I'll let you fix the price. What do you say to 10 grand? I'd say take it. What do you want her for? I want to bury her. You want to pay 10,000 just to bury that girl. Why? She's my wife. Well, I don't have the body, but if I find her, I'll gladly remember your offer. Listen, you mail order detective, you know where she is and I want her. I'll give it to Lamar. You know, I mean it. I think he does. Uh, put it with the collection, Doc. And thanks very much, Mr. Corlin. That was all right. No, I didn't do anything. Say, if you fellas feel like I do, I'll buy a drink. Oh, no, thanks. We, we never drink anything when we're working. Is there anything I can do to help? There may be. Later on, you're a pretty handy fellow to have around. Uh, Doc has it. Oh, thank you. You know where to find me. Oh, yes, yes. Goodbye. So long. Come on, on your way and find that undertaker. Well, what are you going to be doing? Well, I have to rest. I'm going dancing tonight. Dancing? Yep. Where? Wherever the band is playing. It used to be at the Roost. I'll uh, have to call up the Musicians Union and find out. Hello? Just a moment. Uh, it's the manager. He wants to know if you heard a shot. Tell him yes. He says yes. Some ashes there. Fella yes. break his leg. Table for one, sir. I'm just looking for somebody. One of our hostesses? Later, later. Yes, sir. What a place. What's the matter with it? Nothing. Uh, you buying? As usual. A uh, couple of whiskey and soda. Yes, sir. Make mine the same. Well, did you find your musician? There's a lot of them over there. No? Which one's yours? I don't know. Maybe I better bring that bellboy from the Darlow Hotel over here. What about the undertaker? Oh, got him right under my thumb. You stick with me, and someday you'll be the second greatest detective in the world. <laughs> Well, the joke's on you. He's not an undertaker. He's an undertaker's assistant. We'll make him fit. Where is he? Uh, he's night man at the Haslam Funeral Parlor. His name is Thomas Connell. Well, what are we waiting for? Four whiskeys. Surprise. What are you talking about? The girl in the gray dress. She's one of our hostesses. Would you care to dance with her? 
No, I wouldn't, but uh, he would. <laughs> yeah, get it, would he? Okay. Who is she? She was in the room next to Alice Ross in the Dollar Hotel. Eh? I wonder what she's doing working in a place like this. Well, the poor girl's got to eat, you know. She had $3,000 in her purse last night. Oh, maybe she's swing crazy. Say, Catherine Corton was swing crazy. Uh -huh. And she had $6,000 on her when she disappeared. I know. Frankie French says Arlene Vincent lived in that hotel and he just gave her a 3000 Oh, both of those girls are blondes. This girl's a brunette. Did you ever hear of hair dye? But she fits in someplace. She'll be over in a minute, sir. Thanks, bud. So that's the girl that slugs you with a bottle. <laughs> It'd be a pleasure to be slugged by a dame like that. I'll give you a chance. Look, you go dance with her. Tell her a cop, ask the doorman about her. See, you scare her out and I follow her home. Why can't I take her home? You didn't do so well with her. Go on, dance with her. Well, I can take it. It's me you're looking for. Do you dance? Do you? Oh, do I dance? Baby, I wiggle like a worm doing a big apple. <laughs> You uh, hostess too? Yeah. You want to dance? What can I lose? Not a thing. Contest, huh? Well. You trunk, baby? That fella can play. He's playing a gang of horns, but you should hear him when he's really right. What a trumpet's hot, isn't it? Doorman uh, gave me a message for you. For me? Yeah. Oh, what was the message? Well, he told me to tell you there's a fellow by the name of Lieutenant Strom out there waiting for you. Lieutenant Strom? Yeah, a cop. What? What's the matter? Would you pardon me? I I just got a Charlie horse. This racket must be pretty good. What do you want? I don't want a drink. Sit down, sit down. I, uh, just... If you came up here to ask me a lot of questions, I don't know anything. That letter you sent your mother has her quite worried. Don't you think you better let me take you home, Miss Cortland? Oh, that's why you've been following me. You, you think I'm someone else. Well, I know this hostess gag is not on the level. What makes you think so? That $3,000 you had. Well, that doesn't belong to me. I'm keeping that for someone. I see. Well, have it your own way. Just one more thing, please. Who is that musician you're running around with? I don't know any musician. That's very uncomplimentary. I thought he played very well. What is all this? I, I just wanted to see you. I've got a job. What do you want? Maybe she thought that dick waiting for her wanted to see you, too. Who is this? I'm a private detective. Well, what do you want here? I just wanted to ask you a few questions about Catherine Cortland. I don't know any Catherine Cortland. I suppose you don't know Alice Ross, either. I never heard of her. Now, listen. I know all about you and Alice Ross. The elevator boy at the Darlow Hotel identified you as the musician who was the last person to see her. Now, do you want to talk or do you want a lot of trouble? What do you want to know about her? That's better. Who was she? Well, she was just Alice Ross. I met her in New York, and when I came back here, she joined me. All right, go ahead. He wanted Mrs. Taylor to give me a divorce. Is that Mrs. Taylor? Yes. She had Alice to be alive now. What do you mean she'd be alive now? Just that. She killed her. 
Sam! You did. You drove her to her. You're watching and spying. She was always like that, always watching and following us. Every place we went, every place I worked, she'd get jobs. Anything, just so every time we'd look up, we'd see that spying face. If you want to know any more about Alice Ross, ask her. Sam, where are you going? I don't know. Don't make it too tough for me to find you. Hey, Bill, what do you think? I think we're going to the Haslam funeral parlor. Oh, Come no, on. no, no, wait, 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 this is important. Look, right after you and the girl left, the waiter brings that hot trumpet a note, and what do you think he does? He leaves. What do you think I do? You follow him. Right, but where do you think he goes? To his apartment in the Superior Hotel on Water Street. Now, come on. Mr. Cannell. Mr. Cannell. Put the lights on, Doc. I'll look in the back room. Hey, somebody beat us to him. Powder burns right behind the ear. Must have been somebody knew him pretty well to get that close. How long has he been dead? Oh, an hour or two. Well, what are you looking for now? Ought to be a burial record around here somewhere. <clears throat> You're not going to find Alice Ross in there. There it is. I just want to see the last entry. Agnes Christie. 54, 54 Farnwell Avenue. Take a run out there, Doc, and see if a woman by that name ever lived at that address. If it's phony, go out the Edgemore Cemetery and find her grave. What do you want me to do to the grave? Put some lilies on it. Calling the cops? No. I wouldn't want to wake Mr. Strom up at this time of night. Let him read it tomorrow in the paper. He's going to fool around with Mr. Strom till he puts you away for keeps. I wonder what he'd say if we told him we just happened on another murder. Hello, give me the city desk, please. Go ahead, on your way. What are you going to be doing? I think we're going to crack this pretty soon, and i got to get a lot of sleep so I'll be fresh for the finish. Hmm. Hello, city desk. This is your phantom reporter. Send a man out to the Haslin funeral park. Not has been, Haslin. And a good good morning, my young friend. How did you sleep? I didn't. There isn't any 5454 Farnwell Avenue. It ends at the 5100 block. That's what I thought. But I found the grave all right. Has Good. Strom been over? No. Well, he will be. He's probably busy with the undertaker. Have you seen this? They found fingerprints on the back door of the morgue. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can find out now who done it. But you don't get it. They're mine. I left them there when I was examining the lock. Well, every murder slips up somewhere. Uh, my friend, the colonel, will fix it up. Mm, that's what you think. Read the rest of it. Dirty, two-timing, double-crossing snake. How do you like this? Colonel Black, manager of the detective agency, which formerly employed Crane, informed police that Crane was not sent to the Morgan agency business. Denied all responsibility for Crane's acts. But, uh, I don't have to take that. Now, listen, relax. The Cortlands are paying plenty to keep out of this. Now, the colonel can tell the police the identity of a client is confidential, but there's going to be a grand jury investigation of the Morgan. And if the colonel pulled a line like that to the grand jury, he'd be in contempt. Wouldn't that be too bad? Ask who it is. Who's there? Uh, come in. Good morning. How are you? We've got some news for you. Fine. We found the grave of Alice Ross. We're going to open it tonight and see Let's if... Let's say I'm tickled to death. You don't have to do that. What do you mean we don't have to? I came to tell you. Mother's had another letter from Catherine. She realized her first letter might have sounded tragic and wrote another. And now that we know she's alive, we're withdrawing from the case. That's swell. That gets me out of that graveyard department. It may be swell for you fellas, but what about me? I'm in this thing up to my neck. If I stand still for five minutes, Spitzy and Collins start shooting at me. Frankie French is going to kill me on sight. Layman and Strong are on my heels like a couple of bloodhounds, and the district attorney says I'm practically in the death house right now. Listen, brother, client or no client, we dig at nightfall. Well, I'm terribly sorry. If there was anything I could do... Yeah, if you want to do something, get me Alice Ross or Arlene Vincent. I know Arlene Vincent. She calls herself Kay Renshaw now. And she's going to be at a party in Jack Martin's penthouse tonight. Would you like to go? Sure. Fine, I'll give you the address and meet you there at 9. Me too. Wait. Well, that's all I've been doing is waiting. The bill's up to $87, and I don't run any charge accounts. Any more of your impertinence, my good man, and we'll take our business elsewhere. But that's what I've been trying to get you to do. 
Mm. So this is a penthouse. Now you'll see how the other half lives. Society stuff, huh? That's right. These are very nice people. Now, no rough house. Evening, gentlemen. Maybe it's a gag. Uh, we're to meet Mr. Cortland here. Come in, gentlemen. Mr. Cortland phone. He'll be here later. He asked that you carry on until he arrives. Carry on? Pardon me. I wonder if he's running as fast as he can. You see what I mean, sir? Just carry on. Oh, Mr. Crane knows all about that high-class stuff. Now, wait a minute, lady. I've got to get some more ice. Oh, but I won't hurt you. Now, lady, please, wait a minute. Hey! Ooh, look at the big, handsome man. <laughs> Do you like tangy? Well, if you're tangy, the answer is yes. Oh, boy. Oh, would you look what tangy's got? Four oh, men. Oh, boy. This one's mine. Honey, you grabbed yourself the grand prize. That's Dolly. Dolly, meet Doc. Oh, I just adore doctors. Well, you're gonna need one if you don't let go of him. Now, wait a minute. Girls don't fight. Back home, they call me Sultan Williams. That's for me. <laughs> Am I happy? Keep your mind on your work. Well, aren't you even going to introduce him to us? Sure. Girls, this is tall, dark, and handsome. Don't forget that you saw me first. I'll try to remember. <laughs> Not tonight, dearie. Champagne, sir? supposed to intrigue you, and you're supposed to follow her out there. And then when the fellow who owns the place catches you, he throws you off the roof. I won't do that because I'm too young to die. I like you better anyway. And who is the fellow that owns this journey? Oh, you crashed the party, too. Not exactly. <laughs> but you are rich, aren't you? Not yet. Oh, your type never are. Oh, hello, Popsy. Oh, here you are. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for Tangy? All over the whole house. <laughs> See what you mean. Silver spray on a velvet blotter. What? The moonlight on the lake. The moon's all right if you like it. Don't make me romantic, though. No, it wouldn't. Just what do you mean by that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Would you like to dance? Not now. How about a swim? In the fountain? Oh, in the lake. You got a yacht? Not exactly, but I could probably get one. I got one. Would you like a drink? Sure, why not? Uh, pardon me. You look like a pretty nice fellow. I thought I'd tell you. I wouldn't spend too much time with Miss Renshaw. Did you say Renshaw? Mm-hmm. She's your host's personal guest. Well, I appreciate that very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You don't get it. Well, the man... Now, look. I'm going to tell it to you just once more. Having a good time? What's it to you? Oh, no offense. Just want to be sure you're enjoying yourself. You see, I'm giving the party. Now, stick around. It's going to be a good one. Doc, please. Now? She'll forgive you. Come on. Let's see right. I found Kay Renshaw, and we're going to kidnap her. Hmm. Don't you think you ought to wait for Cortland? Maybe she isn't Arlene Vincent. We'll find that out later. You get downstairs and get the cab ready right in front of the door. Then phone me. When she comes down, ease her into the taxi. <laughs> Great stuff, Mastermind. I hope we don't get over 50 years for it. Expecting a phone call in a few minutes. The name is Crane. Will you remember? I'll be on the terrace. Very good, sir. Oh, uh... 
Lady has dropped your handkerchief. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, look, I get it. Margie, Maine, 87164. Ha, ha, ha. We'll be seeing you later, babe. What kept you? The bartender had to open a new... Oh. You getting any glow out of that? You think I'm cold? No, just a trifle reserved. Haven't I seen you somewhere? No. People don't forget me. I can forget anybody. Anybody. Now forget me. Hold my glass. Telephone for you, sir. Hello. Who, French? Oh, yes, put him on. What do you mean, put him on? Hello, Frankie. Hey, what are you trying to do? Give me the double talk? This is Doc, do you remember? Look, I'm trying to tell you that this cab driver don't want to play. Well, I think this is going to be all right. Why don't you come over? Why don't I come over? Are you crazy or something? Listen. I called you up to tell you that the cab driver won't give. What'll I do now? I'll leave that up to you. You'll be right over, huh? In ten minutes? Excuse me. On your toes. Here she comes. On my toes. Here she... What kind of business is this? Hello. Let me have the thing, will you? Mr. Cortland comes, tell him we went to the graveyard. I remember what you said. Cab lady. Where to? Once over lightly around the park. Yes, sir. What happened to him? Oh, Gus, you mean? Huh. Don't have to worry about him anymore. He's working for us now. I bought the cab. For how much? 200 bucks. 200 bucks. And I bet it hasn't even got a spare tire. I know, but ain't it a dandy? All right, funny men. What happens now? Steve Collins and Frankie French both want to see you. Now, we're going to take it at whichever one you say so that they start shooting at each other for a change instead of at us. Yeah, if you get much funnier, I'll have hysterics. I'm gonna give one of them a look at you, so make up your mind. Yeah, you see, we're being little gentlemen. We're giving you a choice. If you don't let me out of here, you'll be dead, little gentleman. Oh, oh threats, huh? All right, we'll take you to Frankie French. Got... No, not to French. All right, Collins, then. Tell her what place, Gus. Right, boss. We'll stop at Collins, and you take her in. Then I'll pick up the tools, and you know where to meet me. I could suggest some place. She isn't his wife. She is. What did you do with her? Well, she seemed satisfied to stay there, so I left her. Everything depends on what's in the grave now. Let's get the tools. Right over here. Quiet, quiet. You got a horn on that frigid air? Oh, I got a horn. It cost 12 bucks. No, 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 not now. Look. Keep a lookout for watchmen and policemen. If you see any, blow that horn, drive around the corner, and pick us up. You got that? OK. All right, come on, Doc. What's your hurry? All right, boys. Get on down there. Come on. Hey, Lieutenant. Look what I found snooping around. Mr. Crane. Well, this is indeed a pleasure. It's a pleasure to see you fellas doing some work. 
Apparently, when you took the page out of the undertaker's ledger, you overlooked the fact that there are such things as burial permits. So I suppose you came here tonight to correct that little mistake by removing the body. Go on, keep on working, boys, because Crane is going to be with us for a long time. Here, fellas, we'd like to help all we can. And I want to hear Colonel Black say that you're not working for him, and I'll give him a sock right on the snoot. A lieutenant. It's empty. Here, Crane! Come on, boy! It doesn't look so bad from here. Yeah, we can get to it. The cops don't see it. We're a cinch. It's going right past it. Let's go. Yeah. Oh. Don't ever do that. The butler gave me a message. I got out here and climbed the wall just as the shooting started. Who were they? Cops. They opened the grave and found it empty. There it is, right there. Well, do you suppose the body was ever in there? Uh, I wish I knew. Well, what are you going to do now, mastermind? How about you thinking of something for a change? All I can think of is how we're going to get out of here. Nineteen seventeen. Doc, see if there's one of those shovels still down at the grave, will you? After all that time, that lock ought to be a little rusty. Break that lock off. Sure, that's a great sound, no more. Positive. May I look? Certainly. Do you know her? Who do you suppose she really was? When we find that out, we'll know who murdered her. It shouldn't take very long now. Have you reported this to the police? I am the police. Only use your phone. Collins. Hello, Collins. This is Crane. We found Miss Ross' body and we have it here at the morgue. I ain't interested. Well, aren't you going to thank me for bringing your wife back to you? <laughs> hey, that's a big joke. That's not my wife. Then perhaps you better come down and take a look at Miss Ross. Maybe she's your wife. I ain't interested. We can't accept this body. It's been embalmed. We have to have it identified. You want to call the coroner? This time of night? Suit yourself. Well, leave it here, but have it identified before morning. Don't worry, we will. What did Cullen say? Practically nothing. Hello, French. This is Crane. We have Miss Ross' body at the morgue. Right. Be right over. Well, where's Taylor? He's, uh, he'll be right up. Huh? Oh, how about the others? French will be here right away. Collins says he ain't interested. He also said that blonde is not his wife. Wouldn't. Hello, Taylor. We uh, think we have the body of Alice Ross here. Will you take a look? It's her. That's all, Taylor. Thanks. Who is he? A hot trumpet. 
That's the fellow that Alice Ross killed herself for. But you said she was murdered. Yeah. And you're letting him go? We have a rough shadow on him all the time. What's a rough shadow? One that lets himself be seen by the party he's shadowing. Why? What's the reason for that? It's tough on the nerves. Hello, French. We have the girl that disappeared from here. Perhaps you can identify her. Perhaps. Never saw this girl before in my life. How did you get her back here without attracting the police? The attendant is new. He didn't recognize her. We told him she was left with an undertaker by somebody who disappeared. You want her? Not interested. And thank you very much. French is much too casual. He may be back. Or Collins, if the girl you took back wasn't his wife. Yeah, I'll bet a lot of dough she is. Doc? I'm gonna need Mrs. Taylor. There's a couple of places where she may be. I'll find her. Why don't you run along and get some sleep? Listen, if you think anybody's coming back, why don't you and I hide out here and wait for them? We might get them red-handed. Pretty risky. Well, it's all right with me if it is with you. All right, I'll stay here and watch these two spots, and you watch the outside entrance from your car in case I fall asleep. Sleep in here? How could you? You don't know me. I can sleep anywhere. Put the light out. I got him. I got him, Doc. Hit the light. Cortland. It's a good thing you were here, Doc. I really went to sleep. I'm sorry, Crane. But I couldn't let her be identified. Oh, then it is your sister. This case isn't closed yet. Well, why not? If this bird had come in... Look, get me Strom. Taylor and Mrs. Taylor, and the coroner. Any more? I'll give you just one hour. That's big of you. You couldn't use Charlie Phillips, too. Who is he? He was kidnapped from Philly in 1903. Get out of here. Say, what's Williams bringing that makes you think you can hang this thing on Cortland? Suppose I don't. You're no worse off than you were before, are you? No, just maybe a suit for false arrest from Cortland. Can't you hold him for trying to knock my brains out? That's no crime. You're so cute. It's a pleasure to see you again. Take one of the good seats. Doc, I'll uh, need some hydrogen tetraoxide. Huh? Just ask for H2O4. H2. Oh, I get it. Uh, you want a straighter with soda? No, in a basin from the laboratory. And uh, one of these people can identify the body? Two of them can, if they will. How about it, Cortland? She was my sister. And it was you who stole the girl's body? Yes. I know if I claimed it, the disgrace would kill my mother. So I hired a man to help me. Which one of you killed Al Horn? I did. I only meant to stun him. The rest of the story you know. But we still don't know who killed the undertaker. I did. Why? Well, he... He had threatened to talk, and, and I was in so deep that I didn't... It won't work, Cortland. Just a minute. Keep quiet, you. No. He did kill Al Horn, but he didn't mean to. That's only manslaughter. The death of that undertaker was cold-blooded murder. Cortland wouldn't do that even to shield his sister. I'm not shielding anyone. My sister is dead and there's nothing more I can do for her. Put it right there, Doc. Uh, 
Mrs. Taylor, I wonder if we could ask you to stand up for a moment, please. Now, would it uh, be asking too much for you to put those lovely curls in the basin? Or must I do it? Don't do that! Don't, Court. Don't. Look, it's no use. He knows who I am. But I don't know who she is. His sister. If she's Catherine Cortland, then who is the lady in the morgue? The dead woman is the real Mrs. Taylor. Her husband killed her because she wouldn't give him a divorce so he could marry the rich Miss Cortland. Did you know that, Miss Cortland? No, I didn't know. He said she'd killed herself. She did kill herself. Why should I kill her? Because she was always following and spying on you. When you found her occupying a room next to Miss Cortland, you killed her while she was taking a bath. And you dragged her through the connecting door into Miss Cortland's room. When you got through, you discovered her body had left watermarks on the door, so you filled the tub to explain them. The three of them had been living in the hotel only a few days. Nobody saw them very much, so naturally everyone assumed the body found in that room belonged in that room. How do you know Alice Ross, uh, Mrs. Taylor, was murdered? Because her heel marks were a foot above the bathroom scales. If she had stood on them to hang herself, those marks would have been the same height as the scales. You're very clever, Mr. Crane. Wait a minute, I'm not finished. That's the gun he killed the undertaker with, if you can get it. I wouldn't try it if I were you. Don't, Doc! Arrest him, Strom. I think he has. You uh, knew your sister was alive from the first, didn't you? Yes. When Taylor told Sis his wife had killed herself, it frightened her and she wired me. I flew into town, but Mother had already hired the agency. If you turn state's evidence, Cortland, Taylor will hang. I'll do the best I can to get you off with a light sentence. Even if you did try to kill Craig. That one we'll forget. <laughs> well, I don't know how I ever brought myself to that. Thank heaven you stopped me. But how did Williams happen to be there? You sent him to look for Sis, didn't you? No, I wrote on that card, stick around, things are going to happen. But why? I knew you were the man who moved the body. You heard me tell Williams we were going to the cemetery last night. So you sent us to the party to get us out of the way while well, you did it. But that was guessing. Oh, I'd begun to suspect you. And when you didn't show up at the party, I was sure you sent us there to get us out of the way. So I set a little trap for you. I left a message with the butler that we had gone to the graveyard. You showed up there a half an hour later. But at no time had either Doc or I told you which graveyard we were going to. Had we, Doc? What are you doing? Oh, I, I was just thinking, Bill, uh, with a little lemon, it wouldn't be bad. Don't fool around with that stuff. You want to turn out to be a blonde? Margie, Maine, eight, seven, one, six, four. Come on. Where did you get that number? I'm a detective, remember? 